Hello, my name is Mr. Fontenot. Welcome to my YouTube page, Mr. Fontenot 1111. In this video, I will be working problem number 10 from the chapter 21 math handout. If you have any questions regarding the formula sheet or any documents I'm using in this video, please refer to the chapter 21 math handout instructions and overview video I will leave a link in that video I will leave a link to that video in the comments alright so we're looking at problem number 10 here and please take notice of the electrical quantity spreadsheet I have written out here so I've got my primary voltage which was given to me. I'm going to have a secondary voltage number one, a secondary voltage number two. I'm going to have a primary current total which will be the sum of the current that is induced in the primary by the first secondary and the current induced in the primary by the second secondary. I have a resistance in load uh, an RL1 which is the resistance load of the first secondary. I have an RL2 which is the resistance load of the second secondary. I'm going to have a total amount of power that will be induced in my primary side here. And that total amount of power is going to be the sum of the power induced in the primary from the first secondary plus the power induced in the primary from the second secondary. So there will be two amounts of power induced in the primary that gives a total amount of primary power. I've got my primary windings then I've got my secondary windings number one and my secondary windings number two. So here is your electrical quantity spreadsheet that you need to use for video I'm sorry problem number 10 or anytime you have a primary a, a transformer with one primary and two secondaries now I've drawn my circuit here and I like to draw the circuit and recommend that you do too for clarity's sake so let's take a look at the circuit that I've drawn the benefit of drawing the circuit is we can start filling in some values up here that's going to help us be able to visually see where these values go. So I got a primary voltage. I've got my resistance load 1, resistance load 2. I've got my primary windings here first secondary windings here, second secondary windings here. So I can, as I find these values, I can put them on my circuit up here on my transformer and figure out what goes where. Alright, the bottom line is here since I've got two secondaries, I'm going to have to run through my calculations for each secondary. So I'm going to do it one time, then I'm going to do it again for the second secondary, and then I'm going to have to add up some values to get my primary current, as I mentioned, and my primary power. My total primary power and my total primary current. 
So let's get started here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the secondary voltage number one, VS number one, the induced voltage of secondary number one. So formula tells me that I'm going to put the secondary windings first, which is 250 over my primary windings which is 500 times my primary voltage of 240 and this gives me a voltage in the first secondary of 120 volts right here and I'm gonna write that on my circuit in just a minute all right now I need the current in my first secondary and we see here to do that we're gonna use Ohm's law we've already got our secondary voltage so we just need to divide our secondary voltage by our first secondary resistance which is 2.5 times 10 to the third and this gives me 48 milliamps in my first secondary here all right now I've got to find the power of the first secondary so in order to find the power of the first secondary here, I'm going to use the current of the first secondary that I just calculated times the voltage of the first secondary that I calculated here, which is 120 volts. So that gives me 5.76 watts. Now as we know the power of the primary is equal to the power of the secondary so the first amount of wattage that is induced into the primary is this amount right here this is how much wattage the first secondary induces in the primary all right now number five down here I need the current of the primary which we're going to use the power of the primary 5.76 which is already in there divided by the voltage of the primary so this gives me 24 milliamps this is how much current is induced into the primary by the first secondary winding. So let's fill in a few blanks up top. All right, so you might need to pause your video in order to fill in the blanks that I have filled in on my transformer circuit. But if we take a look at that, We've calculated so far that the voltage in the secondary is 120 volts. I got 500 windings in my primary and 250 in my first secondary. So it's a two to one step down, 120 volts. All right. We've also calculated the current in our secondary. I, I forgot to add that one. Let me add that. All right, so the current in my first secondary is 48 milliamps. And the power in my first secondary is 5.76 watts, which is the first induced power in my primary, 5.76 watts. And the first amount of current in my primary is 24 milliamps. Alright, 
let's make some more calculations and let's see where we're at on our steps here so we found PS1 we found PP1 we found IP1 that's right here all right now it's time to find the voltage of the second secondary and I'm gonna put me a line right here because now we're fixing to enter into our second set of windings all right so the first thing I got to do step number one right here I got to find the voltage of the second secondary and how do I go about doing that I take the windings 50 over these windings 500 times the voltage of the primary 240 gives me a secondary voltage in my second secondary of 24 volts so we're going to have all right we're going to have a second secondary voltage of 24 volts i put that right here now the next thing we want to calculate is the current in our second secondary so we take the voltage which is already in here divided by the resistance which is this resistance right here 25 equals hit engineering so the current in the second secondary is 960 milliamps and I want to put that on my circuit drawing. So that's the current in my second secondary. That's this step. All right, now I want to find the power in my second secondary. So I take the current of my second secondary times the voltage of my second secondary, 24 volts and that tells me that the power of my second secondary is going to be 23.04 watts and I want to put that on my circuit also it's the power of my second secondary All right, now I'm going to find the second amount of power that is induced into the primary from that second secondary. Well, it's equal to the second secondary power. So this tells me that this amount of power is induced into the primary by this second secondary so now we've got our first amount of power induced into the primary our second amount of power induced into the primary and if we were to add these two numbers together it would give us our total amount of primary power right here primary power total is equal to the primary of the secondary one plus secondary two and we see that these numbers are the same so this is the secondary power secondary power number two and I add those two together and I get a total amount of power induced into my primary of 28.8 watts it's the total amount of power that is induced into my primary because I have two amounts of power induced into my primary a little bit by each one of my secondaries and now I want to find here I want to find the amount of current the second amount of current that is induced in my primary IP2 
and IP2 is going to be equal to PP2, which is already in here, divided by the voltage of the primary, 240. So this tells me that the amount of current induced in the primary, the second amount of current induced in the primary, is 96 milliamps. Now that I've got the first amount of current induced in the primary here, and that was here, and I just calculated the second amount of current induced in my primary, which we said was 96 milliamps and I don't know why it's doing that all right so now I have the second amount of current here in my formula second amount of current second amount of current now I can find my total amount of current by adding those two together and 24 milliamps plus 96 milliamps gives me 120 milliamps so that would be the total amount of current that is running in the primary due to the fact that I've got two secondaries each one of them putting a certain amount of current into that primary winding and that is Everything that we were looking for, right here, number 10, IP2, which allows us to find the total amount of power because we add. All right, let me review this circuit, and I think probably the best way to review the steps, uh, to review the circuit is to look at the steps. So... The first step that we took, we found the amount of voltage in the first secondary. The next step we took, we found the current in the first secondary. The next step we took, we found the power in the first secondary and this power from the first secondary it induces some power in the primary then we found the first amount of current in the primary there's going to be two primary currents now because you have two secondary windings all right, steps one through five, they're basically the same steps that we took when we calculated transformers circuits number one through eight. It's just that we're repeating those now because we have two secondaries. All right, step number six, we found the voltage induced in the second secondary. Next, we found the current induced in the second secondary. Next, we found the wattage of the second secondary. And this wattage causes some power to be induced in the primary. So we've got the first amount of power induced in the primary that we calculated here then we have the second amount of power induced in the primary that we calculated here all right the next step we did was we calculated the second amount of current here that is induced in the primary 
the first amount of current that is caused in the primary is caused because of this first secondary. The second amount of current in the primary is caused because of the second secondary. Alright, now here's the new steps. The total amount of power in the primary is going to be equal to the first amount of power that was induced and the second amount of power that was induced and that gives us a total amount of power that's induced in the primary. Then the last step we took was to find the total amount of current in the primary and the way that we found the total amount of current in the primary is first we found the first amount of current induced and we found the second amount of current induced and when we added those two together it gave us a total of 120 milliamps of current in our primary. Now this is showing us here that we could have used the power formula power formula to find the total amount of current could have used the power formula to find the total amount of current in the primary by taking the total amount of power in the primary divided by the voltage of the primary which is 120 milliamps but you get the same number if you add P1 plus P2 if you've enjoyed this video please leave a comment